Hey, it's Cairo. Welcome back to the channel. Today, Wilds of Eldraine just released on MTG Arena. This is day number one, and we're doing Golgari Midrange. You're going to see some familiar faces here. You're going to see some new cards. I'll go over the new cards with you because we've all kind of seen what Black has, and Black has a lot of powerful stuff in its arsenal, but I think there's a couple new cards from Wilds of Eldraine that really make Golgari viable in a way that it wasn't pre-Wilds of Eldraine. So we'll go through it here. We have, first of all, the new card Mosswood Dread Knight. Two drop, three, two trample. If you watch the spoilers and you watch the card ratings, you know that I was super excited to play this card. This is a, uh, uh, when it dies, you can cast it from your graveyard as an adventure till the end of your next turn. And the adventure is Dread Whisper, Sorcery Speed, Draw Card, and Lose One Life. Good for card draw, it's right up Golgari's thing. And whenever you cast this back from your graveyard as a instant, or uh, as a sorcery, uh, the, the adventure... You get to exile it and play it as a Mosswood Dread Knight again. Then if it dies again, you get to do the same thing. So it just keeps coming back. It's very Golgari, and it gives you a lot of value over time. We've also got Glissa. I know this is not a new card, but this card has been wanting a home for a long time since Golgari. The shell hasn't been very good. Uh, Glissa is very good, so now I think she's found a home. We have Gix's Command. We have Virtue of Persistence up here. Seven mana. Beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. And the key thing about this is from a graveyard, not your graveyard. So if you're playing an opponent with bigger things, they're trying to reanimate. This is really fun to grab it from their graveyard. But we also do have uh, this really powerful... It's sorcery speed, so it's not instant. But we do have this powerful removal. A lot of times whenever you draw your six or seven drops early, you're kind of upset about it. But with Virtue of Persistence, you can do Lockthwain Scorn and give target creature minus three, minus three till end of turn, and you gain two life. So you can stabilize the board in that way. We also have the new card, Restless Cottage. I only have one of them right now. This enters the battlefield tap, so it's good turn one play. Not necessarily good to draw later, maybe turn five or something like that. But uh, it also, you can tap four mana, it becomes a four, four black and green horror creature token. Till end of turn, when it attacks, create a food token and exile up to one target card from a graveyard. And as we know, there's a lot of reanimator things running around in standard right now, so this is good graveyard hate. And it's also good to close games if the game gets grindy, like Golgari likes it to be. You can bring in your Restless Cottage and just start hitting them for four. And at minimum, if they have 20 life, you put them on a five turn clock, so... Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for hitting that thumbs up. It's free. It supports the channel. Consider subscribing for more Wilds of Eldraine standard decks, and I'll see you next time. We're going first with a Sleeper and a Dread Knight, or a turn to Virtue of Persistence, Lockthwain Scorn. Probably going to be Dread Knight, and then turn three, remove something, and then maybe turn four, Shieldred, if we get lucky enough. I think this hand is marginal. We can keep it, but we do have to draw mana. We can't survive like, uh, all right, there we go. We knew, no problem, it's fine. Go in, no reason, let's see. All right, green, on curve, three, two, trample. Dread Whispers, uh, if they kill it, we can draw a card, lose a life as a sorcery, and then bring it back later. This thing just is the uh, Dread Knight that keeps on giving. Frolicking Familiar. Blow off Steam. 2-2 two, two Flying for 3 when you cast Instant or Sorcery. Gets plus 1, plus 1 to one turn. Alright. Well, I think we can probably take that out with Virtue of Persistence next turn if they play it. Or maybe we even just save it and go Shieldred. Ruby. 1-2 Haste. Attack with power 4 Greater Creature. Gets plus 2, plus 2 to one turn. Um... All right, let's see if they want to trade. Not, tr I mean, chump block, not trade. Because our Dread Knight is huge. All right, one blue mana, one red or green mana. We'll go for it. We'll go for it. I'll play into the counter spell. I don't know if the adventure deck has counter spells. Two mana. They drop a land total of five mana. Blue, red, blue, red, green, teamer. Okay. Lightning strike on that. 
If they use two cards to get rid of it, I think I'm fine with that. Okay. I think that's fine. Um, prowess, creatures with power less than it can't block it. I'm not concerned about it at this point, really. Gix's command, we can make this a 5-4 and destroy both of these. Go in for five, they go to six. Still have Virtue left over, Tenacious Underdog, Blitz. Mm, that seems good. Counters, destroy. Returned. Alright, Scalding Viper 2 1. When opponent casts a spell with mana value 3 or less, it deals 1 damage to that player. As we know, Frolicking Familiar is whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, it gets plus 1, plus 1 till in the turn. So, what's the play here? Is it uh, Virtue, Persistence, Tenacious Underdog? Or is it Mosswood, Dread Knight, Dread Whispers, try to draw a land, then Virtue of Persistence and Underdog or Dread Knight? I think it's probably this first. Try to draw a land. Alright, there's a land. Then it's this. Then it's that. Because then we can blitz Tenacious Underdog in if they don't have a creature, which they're going to play the Scalding Viper. We're only one mana away from getting out our Virtue Persistence. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a target creature from Graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Every turn, Reanimator, baby. So we're taking Ruby, Frolicking, Familiar, Shieldred. I wonder what else they have. This background is sweet, by the way. The new fairy tale background. Otter for a 3 2, then play the Otter. Shieldred. So, what if we attack with the Dread Knight? They're likely to block it with the Scalding Viper. What if we. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Because if they trade, it dies. We go Shieldred, then we do the Dread Whispers. Draw a card, lose a life, gain two life. That seems good. Shaboom. All right, in you go. That down first. Now we can draw a card, lose a life, gain two life off Shieldred. A Virtue. We'll go to three. Four four haste. It's not gonna do it, my friend. It's not gonna do it. We'll just go like this. Destroy. Virtue. Alright, good game. Team Bird Adventures is shaping up. I don't think it's quite there yet. It is shaping up though. Good game. Alright, opponent goes first. Uh, evolve sleeper two mosswood dread knights. We can be aggro, alright? We can be aggressive. Watch this. Golgari aggro deck, no problem. White, blue. Okay, let's attack. Okay, no problem there. We'll go underdog. Because we don't want to get our... We don't want to use our Llanowar waste for a green if we don't need to. Or a black to deal one damage to us. What do we have? Realm Breaker. What does this do again? Tap two, tap target opponent, mills three cards, put a land. From our graveyard, tap into their control. This game, this land will leave the battlefield exiled instead of put anywhere else. Tap ten, sacrifice Realm Breaker, search your library for any number of Praetors and put them in the battlefield. Okay.
We'll see if they have a board wipe. I'm willing to go Gar Golgari aggro. See if they have a board wipe. They have a revelry. Okay. Um, all right. Let's attack. Okay, I'll draw a card, lose a life. We're not putting out our big hitter yet. Putting out all our two drops. If they have a board wipe, they can wipe our two drops. Mill. Oh, they whiffed on that. No land. All right. All right. Good game. All right, opponent goes first. Two lands. One comes in tapped on turn one, untapped on turn three, if we have two other lands. Go for the throat, Dread Knight, Virtue. All right, <clears throat> I'll reluctantly keep this hand. All right, so Mono Red or Gruel, I guess. Tap land, we're off to a pretty slow start. Felden, we can deal with him. All right, that's a good land. Stops us from taking damage off our land or our waste. Let's deal with Felden at sorcery speed. Really need a cut down so we can go tenacious underdog, cut down. We have another Felden. Okay. Okay, so... Um, is it best to wait and do a go for the throat or try to get a chump blocker up and get it burned away, take three more damage? Probably try to get a blocker up. So that way they don't burn our face. They burn our underdog instead. Okay, four to us, one to Tenacious Underdog. Oh, they did it to Felden. Very nice. Grab a mountain. Block here. Okay. All right, here's the thing. If we go Shieldred, we block Felden. They're going to exile four cards. If we go... I think, we... I think this is the smartest option. Tenacious Underdog, and then hold up a go for the throat. Unless they play Squee or something like that. Squee or Thundering Raiju. If they target their Felden again, I'm going to kill it. I don't want them to have that one card. Now I think we're probably safe to drop Shieldred, not attack with the Underdog. Stabilize this thing. Because if they drop a Squee or something like that, we'll block with a Tenacious Underdog. If they drop a Thundering Raiju, we'll, we'll block with Shieldred. Right now we need to gain the life. Because they could easily have Lightning Strike, play with fire, and then kill us. No play with fire. No play with fire. No play with fire. What are you doing? No. No. All right. Good game. Uh, mono red. They played it excellently. They played it excellently. All right. Opponent goes first. We have a Restless Cottage, which is a new Golgari dual land and, and a creature land. Comes in tap, though. So, and... We have go for the throat, Gix, two Gix's commands. I think we have the mulligan. Keep this. Keep a cut down. Put a cut down away. Keep a glissa. All right. That should be fine. Sleep Curse Fairy. Let's go underdog. If they spell stutter it, we'll at least have it later. Alright. That's likely to be their biggest thing, so whenever we get to Gix's command, 
We can have them sacrifice the biggest thing that they have and then kill everything with power two or less, which is likely to be their other fairies. So hopefully we can get there. Two spell stutters. Like Sleeve Curse Fairy is the new Delver. Alright, let's put in Shieldred. See if they have another spell stutter. Spellsworn Coven, three. Return target spell to its owner's hand, flying whenever it comes in. For four mana, we get to discard a card. This will get rid of a cut down. No, we'll get rid of the Shieldred. I think they're a tempo deck. They'll have to counter things like to um, return things to hand. So let's do this. Let's see if they put something else out. Mocking Sprite. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. We need one more land. One more land for Gix's command. We can clear their entire board. But what do we do in the meantime? Spell Stutter, Shieldred, Tenacious Underdog. So I think in the meantime, we do this. Get rid of our Glissa. I'm willing to, I'm willing to see if they draw a spell setter. I doubt they do. I'll save the cut down. Save the cut down. What do they have? When it enters, you may pay X. You may cast target instant or sorcery with mana value X from the graveyard. Spell stutter. Nothing. All right. That's a good cut down target. Especially if we draw that land. If we draw that land, it's going to be sweet. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. If we draw the land, we definitely just auto win. All right. We can take out the two, three, three, four, five, six, seven. Still, no. We just have to draw the land. We just have to draw the land, baby. Are we gonna draw it? Are we gonna draw it or not? If if we draw that tap land from the new set, okay. There it is. There's the land. Here we go. Take the Halo Forger. We're gonna untap Sleep Curse Fairy. Alright, I probably should have played. Okay, so I should have played Gix's Command right away. For sure. I should have. But now, what we get to do is destroy each power with uh, a creature with power two or less, which is all their stuff. And then. We get to return two creature cards. To hand, baby. Trespasser, Tenacious Underdog. Oh! Yes. We got there. But, I should have done it first. Forgot about that untap. 